Hey guys, today we're going to be slowing down the pace a little bit and taking a look at one of the videos I released earlier on this year, which was a speed build for the Baldur's Gate 3 button. And it was, uh, yeah, it was quite, quite a cool build. And I recently sort of felt like, yeah, I needed to release a longer form version of it just so it would be a little bit more helpful. So we'll jump straight into it. So essentially, we just need to create the ornate decoration for the yeah the outside of the button. Now it's sort of loosely based on you know sort of Celtic knots and you know that sort of aesthetic that you'd kind of typically get in RPGs where it's you know this constant knot or um, you know like you get it a lot with uh, dwarf runes and stuff like that or Viking types of games where. You've got this geometric design that follows around the the outer button or panel or, or whatever it may be so just getting that down first felt like the most essential step to capture the essence of the uh, the style here i'm just gonna hop into it and yeah, I'll just outline, outline the stroke and then essentially what we need to do is we need to break up the design a little bit. So I'm just going to create this uh, object and then essentially just subtract it from what we've got. It's a little bit fiddly at the moment because the, yeah, the width of the object, you know, the, the little center bits where the shapes overlap are not like full pixels, they're sort of like half pixels and stuff. So. It's a little bit manual, but um, yeah, we get there anyway. So we're just gonna subtract this and you'll notice that, yeah, obviously we've just broken up the knot, which kind of gives it a, like a nice, a nice look. So at this point, instead of you know creating the same decoration all the way around yeah we just need to flip and mirror it so, you know copy and paste in that type of thing and then we'll merge it all together and when both sides are merged together we're going to merge these two together and then essentially join the elements cool and the best uh, thing to do is probably just to flatten this now So that's essentially the, the outer detailing done. And then we'll probably just focus on that um, middle main button now. So using the inner shadow here, we're essentially creating like that inner glow effect. You can sort of see it on the uh, the you can see it on the reference there. It's um, it's creating like a highlight ridge that sort of makes it feel like it's a, a 3D button. And doing the same again for the bottom. And now this would actually be the uh, the inner shadow here. The top would be the inner glow, and the bottom would be the inner shadow. I'd say. So we probably just need to create that little step, you know, where the, the light sort of rolls over the button and then it sort of catches midway. So we're just going to use two gradient stoppers here, just the values and obviously add a little bit of a highlight there. There it is. And then get these as close as possible. a little bit of you know sort of slow tweaking and refining going on and you know that's that's a likely scenario really when you're trying to figure out or find the uh, the best best solution really Mm -hmm. 
So to create that little highlight, yeah, I actually chose to use an inner shadow, but just place it underneath the darker inner shadow. And that creates, um, yeah, just that little step where the light reaches its sort of like, let's say, sharpest point before yeah, it drops off completely to the um, that shadow there. And this just sort of reinforces the 3D effect, really. And I'm doing the same again for the top bit. As you can see, yeah, it's when you've got inner shadow, inner shadow, inner shadow, inner shadow, it's like, yeah, it can get a little bit confusing which which one is the inner shadow. So, um, yeah, it's something to look out for. This could easily also be achieved if we decided to use like a rectangle for the, you know, that thin highlight. It might be a cleaner way of doing it that way, to be honest. So it might be something to consider. So now just to bring it sort of close to, to the uh, design we're referencing, I'm just gonna sample some of the, uh, the colors here. We're getting somewhat closer. This is the part where it starts to come to life. We're going to use a gradient. And we're just gonna try and capture that sort of like hot point on the button where it's radiating red. So it's a really sort of, it's a common sort of style for these RPG buttons and yeah, for good reason too. Like it just, it really helps sort of focus your attention from the edges of the button, but you know, into the, into the words that are on the button. Just creates that hot point. It's looking quite nice already. This effect could also be easily achieved if, um, when we started the video, if uh, instead of using the inner shadows and stuff like that, we just used rectangles, like I mentioned with the, the thin sort of highlight. And that would probably yeah, add a little bit more clarity to what's actually going on. And then you could, you know, mask the button essentially. You could mask all the elements inside so it'd be nice and tidy. But um, yeah, the benefit of doing that would be you'd have a different canvas hierarchy where you've got these, you know, highlights and shadows and stuff like that. Um, as you can sort of see, the canvas hierarchy, this is all happening on one object. So. Yeah, I think my, my intention is to kind of see how close we can get without having a really bloated hierarchy stack. Instead, we've got a really bloated um, effect stack. But uh, but yeah, it just goes to show, you know, there's there's many ways you can um, yeah achieve this button, not necessarily just bloated hierarchy or effects and stuff like that, but maybe a combination. Yeah, I'm quite pl uh, pleased with that. So I'm essentially duplicating this base and this is going to be the texture and I'm going to use my favorite uh, plugin, which is the noise and texture plugin. It's really cool. Um, I think I say this in quite a lot of my videos, but um, what it does for you is, yeah, just really powerful. And yeah, you can like change it on the fly as well. So at this point, I'm just trying to, 
yeah, get something that's going to add a little bit like more variation to the buttons. And we're just, yeah, just wiggling the options here, playing with the blend modes. It's just really cool that after you've done it, you can export the um, textures as well. It's so useful. Obviously, because we duplicated it, we just need to clear that um, stack there. It's looking really nice. And at this point, I'm just trying to, yeah, see what we can do, like stack more noise on it just to make it look a little bit more worn. And because we don't really have the identical texture that they're using, we're sort of just trying to get something relatively close. And, taking a look at the texture they're using there you know it's quite obvious that they're using some sort of like dirt that you would get on glass you know that type of thing and the um, material we're sort of replicating here is clearly some sort of you know precious stone some type of diamond or glass type of thing and typically you would get scratches and like muck and you know that type of thing on there so yeah, it's just, just trying to match that really. And also just trying to think about those types of properties that you'd end up getting on that material. So yeah, dust scratches and those types of things, they're all good, definitely worth considering. So it doesn't have to be a one-to-one -one match or anything. So obviously just using a few uh, effects and gradients and things like that, we're gonna create that sort of, that harsh step halfway through as well. And that's gonna give it that proper 3D effect. And already like this button just, it pretty much looks finished, doesn't it? Looks really tidy. It's such a simple button and a lot of the, uh, the difficulty in these types of buttons is just coming up with the design in the first place and fortunately for us you know we're using this this as a reference so we don't really need to you know iterate too much on what the styling's like we just need to match it as closely as possible going for the classic Trajan Pro for this. It's a pretty close match, there's some similarities there. point where the two gradients are me a little bit tighter than they currently are. Just create that harder glass edge, you know. Yeah, I'd like to create some sort of highlight at the top just so it catches the light a little bit if that's possible.
because we're like you know over pixels you know we've got to be really sort of like precise with with what we want so just dialing that and tweaking it remove the blur probably so it's a harder step or at least lower it and just create like a nice highlight it off from the background a little bit with a nice shadow. Yeah, it's looking good. And so just to go back to what I said earlier about the uh, different textures and stuff like that, uh, these are just some textures that I had. I created them in um, Substance Designer. Um, so I'm just going to use them. And these are going to bring a little bit more grunge and variation to the to the overall effect, really. But you could use anything. So see, it's not a one-to-one -one match, but um, you know, it's it's the same. It's capturing the same essence, which is really nice. And then just I've just brought in a, a random texture that I think I used in yeah a previous project, and this is just gonna bring that little bit of that scratchy effect, and, you know, that you would sort of get with glass. Just making sure that we yeah fit it to the object. starting to look good. So yeah, just tweaking the text here. drop shadow there we go it just lifts it from the background which is nice there we go guys so that's essentially the button and i think it's looking pretty cool hopefully you know you give it a try so if you haven't already please like and subscribe and i'll see you in the next video cheers guys